Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. A little background. I hardly see any threads about some of the nightmarish things that occur here if you ever bother going up the mountains or down some of the underground tunnels. Bunkers are generally crappy little concrete igloos but a few are literal underground now abandoned complexes, but those are in the mountain, which is the basis for this story. Be me. Six years ago. Gun bro but never into, K as it's for friends. Have two bros with me, plan is to hike up a mountain chain for a few hours and shoot our Albanian manufactured Kalashnikovs. Eat some food, then walk back down and go home. Head up into a village via a little yugo in the mountainous northeast Albania. Start walking up hills until we don't see the village. Mountain is steep, probably around 6,000 feet above sea level, and it's cushioned in between several other large mountains. We pick this mountain because the road in the village ends at its base. We walk across a forested mountain till we reach a clearing where we proceed to start shooting like maniacs. Bullets are cheap as all hell. Get bored, we start walking randomly because we have no fear and because we have military-grade flashlights and can just walk back down gassed up because we feel like hot shits with our shitty axe. Sun starts to set. No worries because there's no chance we'll get ambushed by some wolves or bears. Wild animals are generally scared of people but they start getting a little courageous when it's nighttime. The real threat are vipers which are venomous. Most of this area as with all the mountainous parts of Albania are desolate. You can literally murder somebody here and they'll never be found as nobody bothers hiking this far up unless they have some little hut to chill. Almost dark. Bro number one let's call him Frank notices a dark hole on the side of a gigantic semi-circular boulder that seems to be attached on a hill. Wants to go inside and see if there's a brown bear to shoot up. Knows how to skin animals so might be worthwhile as it's good coin and eating raw bear heart and balls supposedly makes you strong as some older timer would say. Hike up and enter the tunnel. It's around 18 feet high. Have our military grade flashlights which are more like those police batons with flashlights on the end but the good kind made in Germany. Three of us start walking down the tunnel single file. Pretty large opening but the tunnel starts shrinking the more we go down, around 6 to 8 feet high and the width being around 4 feet. Initially around 8 feet wide at the entrance. I don't think a bear would live here remarks bro number 2, let's call him John. Literally nothing inside just dirt on the ground and smoothish almost black surroundings of tunnel wall. Not obsidian but something like a black granite. Still walk to see what's at the end. Both Frank and John are in front even though I'm the gassed up punk thinking I could kill anything like a spec ops assassin with over 100 confirmed kills. After about 15 minutes of walking down a tunnel that went on for about 2 to 3,000 meters we finally end up finding an iron door at the end. Still not spooked, door looks rusted so it looks like nobody's ever opened this door for around 30 years or however long it takes for an iron door to rust down a mountain tunnel. The center of the door has a large circular handle not too different from those big handles used to unlock doors in submarines. Frank proceeds to try turn the wheel. Ungodly creaky sound but he easily manages to unlock the door without much effort. We open the door and enter one by one. WTF.JPEG. New tunnel but now the flooring is iron grating, walls and ceiling are now metal covered. The tunnel is now squarish. Width about 10 feet, height around 20 feet. Turn off our flashlights because the ceiling is lined with those small red lights you'd see in a military base. Everything clearly visible now albeit with a sort of creepy red tint. All of us are happy though. It looks like this is a nuclear fallout base built for Albania's rich and powerful in case of doomsday, or perhaps just a military base. Immediately tell bros to venture forth and see what's there to scavenge. Certainly our scumbag elites in communist times would have hidden some precious things that we can grab and sell for coin, better than a bare skin. If it's just a military type thing maybe we can get a large personal stock of weaponry that we each share equally. Frank literally saying we're going to be rich. At this point none of us feel scared, it's that sort of calm feeling when you know things are alright as opposed to that being watched feeling. I suppose it's because we can clearly see a few yards ahead of us and the door behind us is open so we can GTFO whenever we please. Still toasting our axe like we're conquerors looking for our loot. Walk a few yards to end of new tunnel which spirals into two directions. All of us agree to go left. Continue walking with me in advance. Turn corner. Stomach sinks. Aw oh man. Tunnel ends at this balcony that is blanketed by literal blackness. I mean you can hardly see anything except the iron railing of the balcony. Air feels same albeit a little warm now so we're still in the underground base but now we can hardly see anything. Touch railing. Look up. 
literally blackness for what looks like a few hundred feet. Look down, literally blackness for what looks like a thousand feet. To the right of the balcony there are barely visible stairs. John starts saying we should go and come back another day as it's already dark outside. Frank and I immediately turn on our flashlights and try to peer down. See nothing, it is really deep. Point lights to stair railing and it looks like it's going down into blackness. Our lights seem to trail down to 100 feet of the railed stairs and it seems as if it's endless. Screw this let's just go down and see how far we can get before we chicken out and go back. At this we point we all collectively get the spooky feeling but again there is no feeling of being watched. No goosebumps, just dry warm air and blackness. As we slowly walk down the stairs with me once again in advance we start to hold our axe tight. No finger on the trigger. Ever had that feeling of getting out of the bathroom at night time after you immediately turn off the lights you can hardly see anything and accidentally bump into things? That's the feeling I got because I had to watch my step pointing and looking at the steps. In retrospect it would have been smart if I was holding onto the rail while pointing the flashlight on the steps as I walked down. I instead looked down, flashlight in left hand, ack in right. Frank right behind me also holding no rail. If he tripped up a little I'd be dead. Some I was literally on point extremely focused not to miss a step. Ten minutes pass and it looks like we've only gotten down maybe 50 feet. John starts getting scared and wants to leave immediately. We take a break and eat some leftover jerky we packed for the trip. Point my flashlight down to trail the railing again and this time the stairs come to a dead end. It looks like it's cut off 100 feet below us. Our jaws drop when seeing that the stairs just end and there's still blackness below. If we just slugged on instead of taking a break I could have fell into darkness. The whole walking down the stairs feels like something out of Dark Souls and Berserk. Just as we collectively agree to go back top a burst of hot stench from below starts assaulting our nostrils. Smells like hot copper, rusty iron with a hint of literal rotten eggs. As this happened we start hearing creaks from what's coming from the top of the stairs, balcony. Oh shit dot jpeg. Start running upstairs like crazy. Get to top. Nothing, sound immediately stops as we reach top. Stench still there. WTF Anon says John. Frank now wants to GTFO with a very worrying face. Now I start feeling nervous and humbled. The same noise we heard is now coming from the bottom. WTF is going Anon Frank. Let's GTFO I muttered. As soon as I said this I began getting the feeling of being watched. Even with the first wave of stench and the noise from the balcony I still felt relatively safe. That is no somethings here. But that feeling is now all over me, I get goosebumps. I don't know why but the feeling of dread and despair and the blackness just staring at us starts messing with our minds and we rush out to the red lighted tunnels. Run all the way to the iron doors. Don't bother closing just running. No physical thing was chasing us but it felt like something was watching us even though there was nothing behind us as we were running through the redly lit tunnels. Dropped my flashlight in black granite tunnels. Still all of us are running. We make it out the tunnels. Suddenly it's dawn. WTF we were here all night bros I said start running like mad men down the mountains. Still the feeling of being watched especially as we hit through the forest. Running like crazy. Feeling of being chased, tired, hungry, thirsty. Finally make it the valley we were shooting the shit. Take a break but the feeling of being creeped up on is still there like something jumping out of the bush and tearing us to pieces. Run again down the mountain. Finally see village. First time in my life I'm happy to be near an Albanian village. Make it back down to road. Go back home. That's the story. I have a lot more scarier than this but this is about the spookiest thing I've personally experienced. A few years later I went back trying to look for the tunnel entrance this time with some repeller gear but couldn't find it. I went again this year but again couldn't find it. Definitely some Albanian government made base. This one is a story from an old timer related to my grand uncle. He's been dead for 13 years and was born in the late 1800s. He was so old that nobody knows his real age. Be a hundred years ago. End of World War I. Old timer who then was a young man that had recently gotten married, lived in a wooden house with rock slate roofing up in the mountains of central eastern Albania on the border with northern Macedonia. Had his own plot of land farming corn. Made his own food, had a cow and some chickens. Defended his turf with pride and was what you'd call totally off-grid except the real deal. Would occasionally go down mountain to trade his corn for wheat, tools, clothes. Avid hunter that would hunt and kill bears and wolves for their skins had a very large shar she found. One day takes his hound and goes hunting for pelts as he would also use the furs for trading as well as personally clothing. Wife at his place doing wife things. Gets up to forest and tries to find tracks. 
Hound is extremely intelligent and doesn't scram off and run like most dumb dogs, stays close to him and waits for his word on where to go and what to chase. You have to keep in mind that Albania is geographically unique. The country is vertically split, one side being plains and the other mountains although there's more mountains than plains but also a lot of valleys. Most of the mountainous areas are very isolated even the valley towns up there. Back then especially in World War I these people were like those Amazon rainforest hunter-gatherers in that they were very susceptible to new foreign diseases and were technologically a hundred years behind although Old Timer had a modern rifle for the time. Old Timer caught the Spanish flu a year or two after the story but easily survived it. My maternal great-grandfather family all died of the flu except for himself and he would later marry my maternal great-grandmother. All right back to story. Old Timer and Hound spot large cat paws imprinted on the ground near a small stream, literally the size of his head. Start tracking the thing. I think you all know where this is going because it's obvious. Ancient Albania and the Balkans used to fill with cave lions, the type the mythical Hercules would have fought and killed. These areas are isolated so it just may be the case a few survived in the early 1900s. Start tracking the beast to a large cave. Hound immediately smells something and starts screaming and howling. Obviously, Old Timer now lost the element of surprise. Quickly a cave lion starts rushing out of the large black cavern. Char Hound without taking orders starts rushing at Lion. Lion is huge, all brown colored fur, looks like a bear but clearly with a lion mane except dark brown and black fur underbelly. Obviously a lion face except more primitive. Old Timer knows the difference between a bear and lion as lions are frequently talked about round here as a mythical creature. Hound gets ganked but protects his master from charge. Old Timer immediately dumps his bullets piercing the lion's back. Gun is a British Army Lee Enfield. Lion immediately hits the dirt but managed to chomp on Old Timer's knee which attributed to his limp he carried for the rest of his life. Lion was huge, at least five feet tall but remember its head was pivoting downwards as it brawled with the dog and then bit Old Timer's knee all the while the Old Timer was dumping his mag on the lion's back. The whole thing from initial charge to hitting the floor lasted two three minutes. Lion from tail to head had a length of about seven or eight feet. Again it was massive. From the looks of it Old Timer managed to shoot its heart from the back otherwise the lion wouldn't have immediately died and he'd be long dead. Bite was deadly but no artery punctured so still alive. Immediately starts skinning the lion to take home. Took him hours to walk climb back down to his house. Scared wife sees his disastrous state, the new brown fleece and lack of a dog. Turns out Old Timer would go on to sell the lion pelt to some French general as at that time Albania was occupied by France after the Germans left. He was a shrewd man and was remarked as saying that Lion made him relatively rich. Apparently the Frenchman gave him a few thousand gold franc coins and he still had some of it when he was alive a few years back. After healing he went back to the cave to bury his dog and the dead Herculean Lion. Explores cave. Sees hundreds if not thousands of skulls strewed both human and animal. This cave was potentially a generational cave for this species and it seems he was the last of his kind at least on that very remote mountain actually found some old Roman coins and Illyrian Greco coins so this cave might have been used by its ancestors for 25 years. Never revealed the location because it probably still had some ancient coins and things worth a lot of money and he would have given the location to his sons. Had two daughters, both died before marrying and having children. His wife died in the 50s. The old man moved on to the capital. Be my uncle. Billy Bob Thornton looking Albanian. Works in chromium industry as structural engineer for mines. Albania has a lot of chromium. Mine in northeast along Kosovo Albania border. Inspects mine for structural integrity. All by himself, nobody is working at that time. Mine is fairly large both in terms of high, width, and depth. Canvas the whole mine. Starts walking back out. Suddenly at the right corner of his eye notices an opening to a human-sized tunnel that he swore he never saw before as he was doing the initial inspection told us that he was scared to go in. Felt like something was inside but he had to go in so as to make sure the hold isn't compromised and cause a cave-in while people work in there. His headlamp and also giant flash lamp starts making his way through the tunnel. Its curves almost endless and is is very long but it's wide enough for two people but just barely tall enough for him. A basketball player would have to crouch for instance. It wasn't that large. Suddenly ends up in an opening. Very large, dark, smells like feces. Hear childish giggling behind him. WTF. Turns around and points light to see what's there. Heart is pounding like all hell. Suddenly starts hearing male whimpers behind him. Turns around and follows sound. It's a man, naked, in fetal position spouting gibberish. Looks like a wild man with long dark brown hair, big wild beard. 
says some Albanian words like don't touch me please, God save me, don't touch me please, God save me, ad infinitum. Spooked out. Checks surrounding again feeling a bit calm now that there's someone, albeit a crazy naked man with him. Make sure whole opening is structurally sound. Grabs naked man and put him on his back carrying him. Smells like feces but not the same feces stink he smelt initially. Man was a worker that went missing three months ago. It was assumed he ran off to get rich in Europe. Guy was completely shriveled like a sponge in the sun. Skin was bleach white even though he was a quite tanned man with bronze-like skin. Nobody knows how he ended up in there. A month later he would do another inspection, no tunnel, completely gone as if a portal initially opened and now is closed. Crazy man went to a hospital for the insane, got out and can't recall anything, his whole experience was memory hold. April 1999. Rumors about Albanians trafficking arms and trying to instigate in Montenegro and Sanzac. The easiest way to go into Montenegro from Albania is via the area around Lake Skadar. Via Ulsinj, or the third route, the Vrmo's River Valley, since the border doesn't follow the watershed in that area for whatever reason, resulting in the northernmost point of Albania being easier access from Montenegro than the rest of the country, geographically speaking. Anyway, the entire area is barely populated, the terrain is very pretty, but not particularly supportive of life, cursed mountains for a reason. Basically, due to the remoteness and the local mixed Albo-Bosniak population, it was believed that some bull will be going on in Gusinj. So, some balls from the Montenegrin government ask us to snoop around. First week is uneventful. The team are staying in this not so old, but sort of decrepit big house. Heck, the dude charged with guarding it spent time fixing things around. By the time we left the house was in a better shape than what we found. We literally scoured everything in the entire valley. Absolutely nothing. Then one night weird airplane activity around. If you didn't know. In April 1999 the Satanists in NATO decided to bomb us with depleted uranium. For whatever reason. But this area they didn't target for obvious reasons. Scouting mission. We take it as a sign that they're gonna try something. Immediately move out to our forward camp a little bit to the west. Where we'd scout the valley for movement. As we reach it, the weird air feel comes back. We all remember. Everyone is on edge. Two guys who were on guard duty in the camp for that night real glad to see us. They say they have a real bad feeling. We set up. It's an unusually cold night. But we don't make a fire to not be noticed by the planes that fly over. Though they probably had thermal imagery. But it never hurts to be maximally careful. Suddenly one guy says to take a look. He accidentally looked across the valley and saw this floating ball of light in the sky. Looks like ball lightning at first. But I take the binoculars and zoom in further. It's actually some sort of sphere made out of glowing lines. Like a globe but with only the meridians and parallels. It seems as if something is around it I guess. Can't look at it too long, eyes start to hurt. Everyone looks and verifies. Suddenly movement on the road in the valley. Oh boy. It's an entire convoy. One plane, a vertical takeoff and landing. Suddenly descends above them. Starts flying real close. But it doesn't make a sound. Looks like that weird stealth bomber we shot down, but obviously isn't. We call it into the army proper. They're gonna have to take care of this. Radio starts to get more and more garbled. A rusty smell can now be sensed. We are all familiar. Spookometer is maxing out. This time, it's far less harsh and disgusting. There is a tinge of this weird smell old electronics and elevators have. Then we notice it. The black tentacle ball is above our encampment. Two of the tentacles are going towards the weird glowing sphere, which is moving erratically. The sphere starts flying around the convoy. Note that it's some real heavily armed. In a split second, with a poof, literally a sound like someone blowing into your ear gently. Every single vehicle, plane included, simply disintegrates. As if every part, to the every nut and bolt was disassembled with utmost care and each and every single one placed exactly 10 meters from each other. Drivers. Other people nowhere to be seen. The sphere starts going towards us. The black sphere starts running from it. At the top of the ridgeline we see the glowing sphere touching the black one. Both are distorted heavily then disappear with a weird, deep buzz. Radio it into the army proper. They're stationed near. Must have seen it. They claim they saw nothing. In the morning we investigated the location of the convoy. Lo and behold, there were metal pieces everywhere. 
Maybe I should ask our former leader if he learned anything about this. Albania originally consists of Slavs, Greeks, Vlachs, and a minority of Albanian tribes. Tribes seize control and decide to create a country in the wake of Balkan destabilization. Forces everyone to speak a bastardized Vlach or Proto-Romanian language and call themselves Albanian at gunpoint and threat of genocide. The country has been overrun by several superpowers but still has 10th century elements in the untouched mountainous regions where blood feuds and a game of thrones like semi-anarchy is the norm. Villages still work according to tribal laws. Entire battalions of soldiers have mysteriously disappeared in the mountains. Biggest drug and trafficking route through Europe, practically a European Haiti when it comes to law enforcement and medical services. Infrastructure is literally stuck in post-Soviet 1991. That's Anno Domini 1889 by Western standards. Good luck phoning home. The people are Muslim but really not, it's more of a Pascal's wager. Faith is an image they apply but in reality they strongly believe in black magic and perform rituals in the woods during nighttime and sing in the mountain tops. They drink and are completely degenerate when they can. They literally believe in vampires, witches and curses. Nobody knows jack about the country and the people won't tell you anything. Literally nothing. Everyone's secretive about almost everything and they never stop looking at you with this suspicious look. They have something called sworn virgins who are women who act like men and control entire clans and families. They sacrifice their womanhood to become men in order to save a family without a male head. Families without men leading them can be robbed or worse. The sword virgin women are crazy and defensive. They literally run around with weapons when not working. It's the most messed up country I've been to in Europe. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time. Remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos.